everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, why would you want to custom size a slitting saw? Well, I can think of a bunch of reasons. Uh, let's say, for example, you had a slitting saw that was wider than you needed for a particular job and it was paid for, you didn't feel like buying another slitting saw, so you might want to just modify that down to the size you need. Another reason is maybe, like Devo, you bought a whole case of slitting saws, but they are SAE size and you want to make a metric. This would be perfect for you. Before we get into the next reason why you might want to do this treatment to a slitting saw, it's important that we, we understand how they work. So we've said in the past, to, to cut, you're going to need rake and clearance. Now I've aligned this scale up with the face of this tooth, and that's what's creating our rake, and you can see the scale passes slightly behind center. And what that means is it's going to give us a positive rake. And that's going to give a freer, more scooping kind of cutting action. So instead of this thing just pounding away, if it had no rake, or worse yet, a negative rake, that's going to make it cut more freely. There's also the clearances that we're going to need. Now, this guy has two clearances. There's a radial clearance ground into the top of the tooth here. And there's also an axial clearance ground into both sides of the tool this way. So over here, I've drawn sort of a gross exaggeration of what these things look like. And you, you can clearly see that this is bigger than, than anywhere else that you would measure on this thing. It's biggest at the outside, which is super important because we only want the very cutting edge to actually contact the workpiece. So I'm going to try and show this. So now I'm measuring right out at the very extreme outside diameter of this, right at the tip of the tooth and you can see what reading I'm getting there on my micrometer. Now when I come down just ever so slightly below that leading edge, you can see we are in fact smaller. Slightly smaller, but we are smaller. So that is going to be clearance and it's going to allow us to cut without generating tons of heat and friction and all kinds of other problems. Another reason you might want to do this treatment to a slitting saw is they will eventually wear and of course since this edge is the only edge touching and these corners are the most vulnerable part of this edge they're eventually going to start wearing round like this and over time more and more and more of this surface here is going to touch and rub and eventually what I've seen happen is they'll start to pick up so there'll be so much heat and friction that it, the sides of the cutter here will actually start accumulating kind of welded on gobs of steel from the piece you're cutting and that just snowballs into a disaster in no time. So what you could do, as soon as you get any kind of rounding here, you could give it this treatment, freshen this back up, get back up to a nice, crisp, sharp corner here and, and then you're good to go again. Now that we've discussed why you might want to do this and uh, the important features of the tool itself, Let's talk about the setup. I'm going to be uh, supporting this and holding this on an arbor that I made actually for running in my milling machine and it runs pretty darn true so that's going to be just about perfect for what we want to do here. There's a bunch of steps to this setup and the order of operations isn't really a concern as long as you do in fact do all these steps before you actually start cutting. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dial in the axial clearance that was on this cutter to start with. I figured the people that originally made this probably had a really good clue what they were doing and I don't see any need to vary this to a different axial clearance than what they put on it. So basically I am being careful to get my dial at center height because we are dealing with a taper here and with it at center height I can see as I run across this surface I'm running zero which means I'm going to be exactly recreating the axial clearance that this cutter started with. Again we're dealing with a taper so my wheel height has to be exactly uh, on center with my fixture height. Super critical uh, anytime you're dealing with a taper center height is all important. When it comes to the grinding wheel that I've chosen for this uh, I've got a couple things in mind here. One thing is I've got uh, quite coarse grit and that's going to allow this thing to cut quite freely. It'll also minimize the tool pressure which should minimize any flexing of this saw and, and that's going to be important to me. Now I only had a half inch wide wheel so I'm actually going to, going to dress this wheel 
and I'm going to give it a very aggressive, fast dressing. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the surface even rougher than it would be if I gave it a slow dressing. So that's going to help keep the heat down and the cutting pressure down. But I'm also going to relieve away half of this wheel because I don't need that whole surface all touching at one time. That's just going to create unneeded uh, pressure and unneeded heat and lead to more flexing. There wasn't room to get a wheel guard on here, so I am going to stay out of the disc of death as I'm doing this work. There's a nice coarse dressing, and now what I'm going to do is rotate my diamond and get this one little stone poking out the side there. I'm going to come to the center of my wheel with that one little stone poking out. I'm going to go to I just touch. I'm going to give it a couple foul, in feed, and then dress away that side of the wheel so it will no longer touch. notice is the wheel's touching out here and it barely is in here and what we're seeing there that's all flex in the slitting saw itself the farther you get from the center the less supported it is and that's why we're seeing it rubbing an awfully lot more on the outside as we get down near the finishing size of this thing we really want to eliminate any flexing as best we can. And so this is going to require some patience, but what I'm going to do is just give the slightest little bit of energy. And I'm going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until the wheel is no longer touching the cutter anywhere. And what that's going to tell me is that we've eliminated most of the flex that was in the cutter, if not all of it. The reason for this is the last thing we want to do is by having this tool flex make this edge here be straight and therefore lose our clearance. take a look at our surface finish and see if we're happy with what we've got going on there. Yes, very happy. That's going to work just fine. One thing I neglected to mention earlier is, is this is a jeweler's style slitting saw, also known uh, as a plain style slitting saw. And uh, the difference between these and I guess a side milling slitting saw is the side milling slitting saw would have tooth faces all the way down the edges. Now I don't have an example to show you but you could well imagine if this thing had a raised tooth face down the side with its own uh, clearance angle on it that would be a different beast altogether. So this is a jeweler style or plain style slitting saw. And this method we've done here today only works with this style of uh, slitting saw. If you had the side milling style that'd be different altogether if you want to uh, change its width. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you found this interesting. We'll see you guys in the next one.